So with the Power World Early Access launch a little later on today, and with the game hitting the fourth most wishlist game on Steam, I figured, you know what, since I spent over 35 hours playing the game, I'll give you guys my concise opinion in three hours or less. <laughs> But, but still, go watch that video, you know what I'm saying? So Power World Early Access Launch, with the keyword being Early Access Launch, I present to you Exhibit A. Now, if you saw my last video, you will remember that I used to have a house here right in the center of my base. Guess what? Now I'm homeless. You want to know why? I had to destroy my entire house because I would constantly come home to my pals being stuck on different pieces of geometry. Like, I would have my birds stuck on the roof. Oh, look, right now, people are stuck right now. Now, I have my little fangirl over here stuck outside my baseline for some reason. Not sure how that happened. Um, I would have pals stuck on my little torches over here, like constant AI and pathing issues I would have with these pals that I could only alleviate by getting rid of most of my non-essentials. And nobody wants to hear that, right? Nobody wants to hear that your creativity when it comes to building has to be stifled due to the limitations of the pathing, right? But now that I've been playing the game for a little bit more, I know how to avoid a lot of those issues with pathing. Clearly, FG, clearly. <laughs> For real though, um, instead of building like a really intricate base dead smack here in the center, what I would do instead, and once again, I hate to say it, maybe build like a really small cottage or cabin right here at the very edge of your baseline that's really, really small, and then place all of your tools, your workbenches and things of that nature way on the other side, giving yourself as much like space as possible for your pals to hopefully not get stuck. But once again, that's not a really good answer because check this out, because it kind of goes against the whole spirit of the game like the more you level the more goodies you get but the more goodies you place in your base the more pathing issues you have right so so it's really not in a good place in that respect and i think maybe they kind of back themselves in a corner with the way bases work so check this out my base is currently level 14 right but even at level one this was the full extent of the radius of my base this little blue line right over here what i think what they should have done is as your base leveled the baseline also expands as well imagine if you will if by level 14 my base could actually extend way out here then maybe okay i would build like my house really intricate way over here and then way on this side across this bridge i would have all of my pal tools craft benches and things of that nature i think that would kind of solve the issue while they still kind of work out trying to make the ai and the pathing as good as possible right now let me travel to my second base so I can give you another example, right? The very best way for you to build the base is to build it as simply as possible. So this base right here, this is my second base. This base is all about mining rocks. The only thing that we do here is eat, sleep, and rocks, right? That's it. And I've never had a single issue with this base. They sleep there, they smelt there. Um, I have my little assembly line working over here and that's it. It's a very simple base. But once again, what if I wanna make something cute? You really can't based on how the AI and the pathing system works in the game right now, unfortunately. Now this might just be a little bit of hopium. Look at this, look at this, look at this. <laughs> I just respawned here and this guy immediately walks outside of my baseline. What are you doing, my dude? <laughs> so this might be just a little bit of hopium, but considering how integral pals are to this game, I, I highly doubt this is going to be ignored. And I, like I said, if they do a day one patch and a lot of this stuff is alleviated, I will do a follow-up video and we'll kind of go back through it again. But I highly doubt this will continue being an issue because as it stands right now, the pals are such a great aspect of the game, right? If you want to play a game where you go out into the world, collect a bunch of really cool, intricate, and just really, really like really expressive pals, this is your game, right? The pals are absolutely a highlight. There are so many really fun pals to go out there and collect. The Flavor text is phenomenal. And I really do love the idea that you can kind of play this game the way that you want to, right? Like if you want to go out into the world and collect a bunch of these bees and have your base like completely ran by just bees, <laughs> I mean, you could do that, right? And I think that is really cool. One thing that I want to do is I want to get a bunch of these fangirls, right? And get my get myself a base on an island and just have like a fangirl island. And the only people I have working there are fangirls, right? Like you can do that in this game. So again, I know it might be hopium. I know it might be copium, but I feel like a lot of these PAL pathing and AI issues will eventually get ironed out. 
Now, I know that was kind of a negative start to the video, but it's not all negative. It's just early access. But when things are actually working the way they're supposed to work, everything just feels so good, right? I got my Relaxosaurus over here watering my berries. I got my little Dick Toast Turtles over here doing mining. They're just spinning the winning. I got a bee over here chopping down trees. I'll have my little Volt Horse over here making sure that my power capacity is charged. That way I can have my little assembly line over here making sure that I have Poke, or I'm sorry, Gigaspheres. <laughs> so I can go capture um, different types of pals working. Like everything just feels really good when it's working, right? You can see you working on that, buddy. I got some other stuff to do. <laughs> I got my little fire steed over here, making sure that I have charcoal and ignits working. So once again, when everything is firing on all cylinders, everything works really, really well, and it's very satisfying. Now, when you go out in the actual game world, my issues with pals really kind of subside quite a bit because for the most part, for an early access game, once again, um, the pals work really well in the actual game world. Now, I do have a complaint. Sometimes it feels like they don't aggro fast enough. Like, I feel like they should aggro a little faster. But for the most part, when you're actually out in combat, you have no issues with these pals. I'm sure they can also get caught on, you know, geometry out here in the world. But it's really easy to be like, all right, you're stuck. Let me go ahead and unsummon you, resummon you. Like, you can really just kind of get them out of trouble. So it's not a really big deal there, right? For an early access game, once again, this has to be one of the more feature complete early access games that I ever played. But it still has some of those nagging issues that kind of plague all early access games right oh man who trapped my buddy in this cage let me go ahead and release one of my pals here this is a really great way to get duplicate pals every single syndicate base that you find there's always a trap pal inside so you're gonna find out really really quick anything that you can get for free in this game whether it's gear whether it's pals that you can get without having to use balls to capture or ignits to actually craft dude make sure that you are on top of it at all times oh dude we have a little civil war going on here hey dude what y'all fighting for <laughs> <laughs> also, when it comes to the pals, dude, they're so much fun. You know, you got my little my little mount here who, who can actually attack while mounted, which is always fun. I got a sandblast. I got a shockwave. I can switch to my flying mount right over here. Tell him to pick me up by holding down the F button. Take to the skies. Rain down fire. Hey. Oh, see, there you go again. Is he bugged? Did I miss? Who knows? <laughs> there you go. That's a little better right there. <laughs> Dude, it's just so much fun. These pals, once again, highlight of the show. If this is what you're here for, this is the very best part of the game without without question, right? Switch to the boy, King Packa. And the, oh, you died. Yeah, you better die. Because <laughs> King Packa was coming. Whee! <laughs> And the whole tagline that you keep hearing repeated on the internet that this game is basically Pokemon with guns, it's actually more than that. Like outside of combat, these pals actually have uses as well. Like you can see right now, I'm basically freezing to death, right? But what I can do, I can summon one of my fire pals and just being around his body heat keeps me warm. And this is an aspect of this pal that's actually not listed in his pal decks. This is just something that you discover on your own. And just for the sake of the YouTube, I've mentioned this a dozen times already, right? The flavor text of these pals are so good but it's not just flavor. So check this out. This pal can easily take flight even while grasping a human. However, it is prone to letting go when tired. Now I know what you're probably thinking, really FG? Why would they put a pal in the game that would purposely drop you while gliding even though you have plenty of stamina? Well, <laughs> Let's go see. Right? This pal also has the ability to allow you to shoot while gliding. So you see my little targets over there. I'm going to go ahead and start gliding, shooting these guys in the face. What's up, y'all? What's up? Oh, no, I've been dropped. <laughs> Dead smack in the middle of these things. <laughs> I love how these pals are just so big for no reason, right? This pal right here is called my Relaxosaurus Lux. <laughs> so I've said a few positive things. Now it's time for me to go back to negative. So I am not, oh wow. What just happened there? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, <laughs> early access, I completely, can I get back down? Uh, well, that's not gonna <laughs> Wow, I can't believe that happened. Dude, if all my gear is locked up in there, I'm gonna be... Thankfully, this game has actually done this a few times. It actually threw my gear outside. I, I, I appreciate that. All right, so let's try this again. Where was I? Oh, oh yeah, I am not a fan of dungeons in this game. Not because I love instance dungeons. Oh, I, did, I accidentally pressed that button. Oh God. <laughs> 
please, please stay on the ground. <laughs> All right. All right, we're good this time. I'm actually a really big fan of Instance Dungeons. I was super excited to see that this game had them, but once I was inside, dude, oh, they became such a chore, right? So you're gonna find out really early on that the tile sets are repeated quite often. You're going, you're gonna go into a bunch of dungeons that have these little dragon bones over here. You're gonna go to a bunch of dungeons that have like these fauna, and what else you're gonna have? Like the dungeons are gonna look very, very similar, and it's so easy to get turned around because because these pathways, right, you see one, two, three, four pathways, right, the exit and then three of these, multiple different pathways branch off of these as well. And guess what? No map, no mini map. And these dungeons can actually get quite large. It's so easy to get lost in these places because everything just looks the same. Like, where have I, look, look how deep this goes. And then you'll come back in here after, you're, after you get done exploring that pathway, then you're like, all right, now which way have I not gone? This has to be remedied and it has to be remedied quick because such good loot drops in dungeons. So it's really hard. You shouldn't be ignoring dungeons, but it's hard to get excited for them just because they are so large and they're just so hard to navigate. Like you're gonna see, once again, this same tile set repeated. You see a pathway down there, a pathway down there. Like, where am I? <laughs> like, where am I going? I have no idea. So you spend way too much time in these dungeons and not because I'm a hater of big dungeons. I love big dungeons. But if you're gonna make a dungeon big, it has to have a lot more recognizable landmarks, a mini map, some type of like system where the game shows you where you've gone and where you've not gone. Because as it stands right now, dude, dungeons which should be a really positive part of the game. Because like I said a little bit earlier on, Anything that you can get in this game that you don't have to craft and capture yourself is such a big bonus to you, right? Because resources, at least on normal difficulty, wear out quick. So if you can get free gear by completing a dungeon, why wouldn't you? But you're gonna find yourself just not wanting to go into these things because it's like, where do you even go? Where have I been? So I think they really need to quickly make dungeons smaller, make them just like a single pathway. I know that sounds terrible, but make them like a single pathway or something like that, or quickly add a mini map, something, because right now, considering how important these dungeons are when it comes to you know getting good loot and good accessories like some of the accessories that drop in here are like really good like this increases my work speed this lowers my dark damage things of that nature you want to be doing dungeons but i personally did not want to do dungeons <laughs> i ain't finding my way out of this double jump dude i love my little cute little pink pawpaws <laughs> So, so overall, do I really like Power World? Absolutely. Like, I really like this game. It really kind of scratches an itch for me because as you guys know, I'm all about hero collectors, right? So being able to collect pals kind of scratches that similar itch, all without the potential of bankruptcy that comes with a gotcha, right? So I, I really want this game to do well. But as it stands right now, even though this is one of the more feature complete early access games that I've ever played, it's still very much early access. If I were you, I would definitely just play the game on Game Pass versus Steam, which leads to other issues i don't know why if you play it on game pass you actually can't play with any of your steam friends which is really annoying but if you're going to play the game on game pass highly worth your time you can get hundreds of hours of gameplay out of this game easily but if you're going to buy it on steam just 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 be mindful of the fact that once again say it one more time mg i will the game is early access especially when it comes to the pals the ai the pathing i think dungeons need a lot of work i actually have a full wish list you want to hear it so I took a bunch of notes while I was playing the game. So here are a few things that I would love to see added to the game throughout the course of early access. Maybe a lot of this stuff is gonna be in a day one patch. Like I mentioned, if that is the case, I will make another video going through the day one patch and kind of rescinding a lot of this stuff that I'm about to say, right? But in no particular order, we need better UI options when it comes to healing sick pets in your base. This is another issue that I had is that your pets will be running around doing a bunch of things, but they'll be sick or they'll be depressed or they'll have a fracture and it's so hard to target Target the pet and then give them the medicine or even know which one is actually sick. We need way better UI options when it comes to that. We also need some better control options when it comes to switching weapons. Right now, it's the mouse scroll wheel. So if you quickly want to just switch to like your melee weapon or your range weapon, you have to just like scroll through. I, I just feel like that can be a lot faster. And right now, there is no option to kind of bind it differently. Linked storage. Oh my God. I know this might sound like some lazy FG stuff. So as it stands right now, the game does have some basic quality of life. That 
that as long as you have the proper materials in a storage bin within that base, you can craft whatever you want as long as you have the materials within that base. I would love to see that expanded to all bases. So as long as you have the materials somewhere in a box somewhere, you can craft anything that you want. Like I, I much prefer that. I think games like My Time at Portia have that. And I think this would make the game just much better. I, I don't see any positives keeping it the way it is right now, because let's say you're trying to build something and you're looking for your venom gland. So you're like, all right, are my venom glands in base number one, two, or three? All right, they're in base number three. All right, are they in chest number one or 30? Like which one of my chests are these venom glands in? All right, I finally found my venom glands. Now let me teleport back to my first base and actually build what I wanna build. I don't see any positive gameplay aspects having that tedium involved. So I think just link all your storage together. That would be best in my opinion. So we already talked about mini maps, but I also wanna see a mini map in the outside world as well. Now I personally also want to see now, keep in mind, I am no survival game economist by any stretch of the imagination. But when I was playing this game on normal difficulty, I felt like just way too many things required ignorance, right? So if I wanna make this production line factory, that requires ignorance, right? If I wanna make my handgun, that's ignorance. How about the ammo? That's ignorance. How about repairing my armor? That's ignorance. Like so many things require ignorance while other things just seem like they just are forgot about. Like wood, for example. Like wood is like a big thing like early on in the game. And then you almost have like an infinite amount of it. I just feel like way too many things take ignorance. Like storage take ignorance. A lot of the fun tools that you can equip to your pals, those take ignorance. The things that allow you to farm ignorance more efficiently also take ignorance. The spears that you're gonna be throwing at pals that are gonna be constantly failing, those also take ignorance. So I feel like between crafting tables, gear, repairing gear, weapons, the ammo for weapons, the am like it's just way too many things that require ignorance in my opinion. Once again, I am no survival game economist. Maybe to alleviate some of that bottleneck, I was thinking, I don't know, maybe you can pick up the balls that you throw that are misses, that would be something. Um, weather effects, I would love to see that, but that's like a future wish list. Optional resizing of larger pals, that's something that World of Warcraft does. So if you're a hunter and you kind of tame a big pet, you can make it smaller if you want, if you just don't want them to kind of just like take up your base and stuff like that, right? Custom map markers that you can actually add notes to, that would be nice. And this of course is less of a wish list. This is more of like a bug beta early access thing, but we talked about it all throughout this video. Better AI for the pals and an auto run button. That would be nice as well. <laughs> so that is my thoughts after playing 35 plus hours of Power World. Once again, if you can play it on Game Pass, absolutely worth playing. Go for it that way. On Steam, I think it's gonna be about 30 bucks. Um, that you got you got to make a judgment call on your own watch some videos you know who watch some videos besides me and kind of make your judgment call on that um but i'm really excited to see where this game goes whether we get like a day one oh, I'm not, am i getting raided right now oh my god <laughs> i can't wait to see where this game goes um based on like a day one patch or something like that or you know six months to a year from now this game could be really really good so that is it my name is fg this was pal world and i'll see you guys in the next video i'm out